Well, I think I'm gonna try to do this sort of more like maybe a vlog style, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, you know, Jay and I have been trying to do a lot of yard work and we have a lot still to do. We're gonna probably hire um, a, a big machine guy to get rid of that. We've got like a wild outgrown area there um, right behind my bird feeder and want to knock it down and you know maybe plant a little garden or whatever it's got good soil so um that's kind of like our plans for back here i love and i film a lot in the spring and summer back here because i love being out here i love the birds we have several hummingbird feeders so from inside i watch the hummingbirds come and fly we make our own hummingbird food so I change it all the time. I think maybe every two to three days, and I only put a little tiny bit in my feeders. So I'm always changing the sugar water. And I just love when they when they come in and visit us. I mean, the little things in life, right? You get you got to find it while you can. Um, I this past well, couple two weeks ago, I mentioned that we had Mother's Day here. I'm gonna enclose just a couple of pictures. I didn't take a whole lot of pictures. I was really super busy on Mother's Day running around and I, I just didn't take a whole lot of pictures. And I normally, I, it was really hard because I really wanted to pose everyone, you know, like a group photo and I didn't do that. I remember Father's Day, which is coming up in June, right? We had my father here and I remember how difficult it was to get him here, you know, because we, he, he was not mobile very much at all in June of last year but he was here with us and we had a barbecue and you know we had the fire pit going and everyone's sitting around and i have a number of pictures and you know everyone really came here that day on father's day and on mother's day i just kept thinking of that because i didn't know that father's day was going to be the last father's day you know that i had i would have with my dad i mean you obviously never know when the last day is right especially as your parents get older so anyways I'm a firm believer in making memories in whatever way you can. So that was Mother's Day. It was a, it was a great day for us um, here as the family. And then I, um, last Sunday, I went down to my niece's house in Massachusetts and we had a sprinkle. Now I mentioned before that it was a baby shower, but she's having a baby girl. And so we did that. and. It was just, it was a small gathering, but we were outside and, and it felt like life was normal, you know? Um, some people were vaccinated, I'm sure some might not have been. Nobody asked any questions. Everyone, you know, uh, before anyone hugged you, they asked if it was okay, <laughs> which is fine, you know? But it was just lovely. She got a, a bunch of beautiful gifts and she's having a baby girl and, um, She's going to name the baby girl after my dad's sister who um, was killed in a school bombing um, in Germany as a young girl. And I think she was 12. And so she's going to name the baby after Adelina. And I just think that's so, so special, you know, so special. So anyways, including some pictures in here so that you can see. <laughs> it's like, but it's just really beautiful. She got some gorgeous, gorgeous clothes. We don't know if we're going to give her a nickname, Addie or Lena or whatever, but I'm so thrilled that she's choosing to name the baby after my father's sister. And her middle name will be Clara with a K after my mother's sister. So <clears throat> it's a great way to tie in both paternal and maternal in a little baby girl's name. So I love it. I, um, I'm also still a little swollen. Guys, I had my second root canal. Second of, you know, I had a root canal that was an old root canal. They had to clean it out. It was very, very infection, very swollen. So I had the second visit for that root canal yesterday. And oh my gosh, the root canal itself wasn't super painful, but when they give you that injection up in the roof of your mouth, I, I was glad I went to the bathroom because I probably would have peed myself in pain. <laughs> it's really painful. So, um, yeah, I know it's just kind of like, you know, 
I don't know, you know, I was like lying there and I, I did take a picture. I had my shoes on and it was like, I said in the winter time, the views must be beautiful because it overlooks the city in Manchester, the window by where I was. So I took a picture of the hat, but anyways, last night it was in a lot of pain. The Novocaine started to wear off. It was just in a ton, a ton of pain. It was unbelievable. But this morning I'm okay. You know, I feel good. My, um, my, I have a third visit to go to where they, you know, take the temporary filling out and redo the whole fill, filling bit, you know. Um, but I guess I'm gonna do that in a couple of weeks. So yeah, I got my root canal done almost. The biggest part of it's done anyways, the root canal part. So thank God I don't want to ever go through that again. And I know who knows, I probably will, right? Um, but you know, other than that, it's been it, it, it's been a it's been a crazy week. I talked a little bit about real estate last week in, in my video and how busy it is. And you know, having been a real estate agent for 36 years, and I'm an associate broker, and at one point Jay and I owned our own firm, it's really hard for us to because we know what the market does you know it goes up and down and so it's like really hard for us to not jump in <laughs> and tell people <laughs> don't buy but i think if it were me you know and if anyone asks me i would say that uh you know the old real estate saying buy buy low sell high well right now it's the sell high for sellers and housing is a inherent need of people. It's it's the, that the need people need that security of housing, of a roof over the head, of a place that they can make their memory. So people will always buy, and it's just a difficult market when you see things happening that you shake your head like people bypassing the home inspections, which I would never do. I would never bypass a home inspection. No, I wouldn't. Because to me, that's like, that's crazy. Um, it's scary crazy because you never know. You could bypass the home inspection, but you never know what could be hidden, you know, or um, not so much hidden necessarily by a seller, but maybe even a seller doesn't even know. So. Yeah, seeing all that kind of stuff, I cringe at it. I really do, I cringe at it because to me, it's so scary to have people do that, to bypass, you know, even even the appraisals. They're saying, okay, well, you know, the bank requires an appraisal, we'll come up with the difference. And people are borrowing from family to come up with the shortfall. I don't know. And I don't know if there's any end in sight because I think the big difference in this, escalated market is that it is not investor driven you know our last real estate boom and bust uh the market was investor driven so when you know speculation and all that right now it's that basic need of housing i think a lot of it has to do with covid with the feeling of being secure and people are you know they're, they're actually coming up to the country you know what i mean they're they're escaping in some cases the cities because you know they want um, you know, they want to have that security of feeling, you know, that maybe they're away from a lot of things. I don't know if that's the right way to say it or not, but yeah, so my real estate market is totally crazy. Totally insane. And I don't know how long it's going to continue to be that way, but it is what it is, I guess, in that sense, you know, not much you can do about it. I do, and I'm happy I live in the country. Um, even though I complain, we don't have things like public, well, there is public transportation, but not readily. You know, you'd have to go into one of the cities, but where I live in my little country uh, house, there's no public transportation. Um, to get a cab to come here would be like crazy expensive. So I do have a, a different lifestyle in that sense. So I know some of you are gonna ask, is this a wig? Um, this is actually my bio hair. This is no, there's no topper. A lot of times I will wear my hair and I'll put a topper on my hair or I put a fake bun and I twist it up. But this is just my hair down um, in its natural state. It's getting a little bit longer so it covers a little bit more of my forehead. I have such a wicked high forehead that, um, you know, I always feel like 
I'm all forehead. I'm such a long face. So, yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to share a couple of things with you. I, I, I probably will pick up a little bit more as I go forward in the week, but I wanted to sort of start sort of a little vlog. Oh, this weekend we're getting company. And um, I reached out to Sheila, Life with Lily, Simply Sheila, and I said, what can I cook that I can't mess up? And so she, she had made a suggestion of chicken kebabs. And so I really don't know. I think I could mess that up. I'm not a cook. I'm not a Susie homemaker. I'm not a, um, a kitchen diva at all. I'm not a kitchen diva. I don't like the kitchen. I don't like kitchen work. I don't like cooking. I don't like any of that. So anyways, but we're having company, friends of Jay's, Golf and his wife, and I, I know them both. They're a lovely couple. So they're gonna come over and we're gonna have a fire pit. I'm gonna sit about, I do make a mean margarita. So I'll make a picture or two of margaritas. And um, and then whatever we cook, I have no idea, but I would have probably go shopping and figure that, <laughs> that out. <laughs> get any ideas anyways by the time this goes public because i'm gonna probably wrap this up as a sunday vlog so to speak and uh, so by the time it goes public it will be sunday 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 fun day so anyways um that's it for now i'll come back in a few or in an hour or two or tomorrow i'm back i yeah i wasn't very good i didn't come back yesterday but something happened this week that has, I guess it's been weighing on me and it made me think that this is probably something that would be very, very good to discuss or to bring up. And, you know, that is maybe the role of influencers and product reviews and endorsements you know, I, first of all, just let me say, I have never as of yet done a sponsored video. I'm not saying I wouldn't do a sponsored video. If somebody offered me a sponsorship on a product I believed in, you better believe I'd jump on that opportunity to make money. Sure, why not? But the key thing is a product I believe in. So for me, I don't wanna just, you know, I mean, I do a lot of Octoly reviews, but I'll tell you, 90 times, 90% 90 of the time when I go into Octoly, I don't even select a product. There's either nothing there that floats my boat, that pulls me in, I don't even select it. So if I'm selecting a product to review from Octoly, it's gonna be something, something I really want, something I really like. And, and then I may, because Octoly has funny rules of 21 days, you know, I may talk about it way before I use it up to really know. But I usually say that, you know, just started, going to be starting, looking forward to trying it. And then there are other companies that reach out. And in my email, I'm not exaggerating, in my email, and I have two emails that are affiliated with my YouTube channel, but without any exaggeration, in that email, I probably have on any given day between 20 and maybe even 30 to 40 emails from brands many of them i might take a quick look and i delete uh, most of them i've never heard of you know because obviously i'm a small youtuber right i'm not going to get no big brands that are going to reach out to me but every now and then i get something that i'm like oh you know i want to try this and there's a number of those that i have done Derm dermatology for example i love their products um new face you know um skin store oh my gosh i love them and got all these bugs around me but you know color science i love their their products and science serum um a number of products maku oil cbd so i can probably count on my two hands the number of brands that i've said yes to that i've enjoyed and continue to use and the rest i say no to so I guess what I'm trying to say is that we all know because we always say it, just because something works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. It's the same thing, you know, I like Blink Eyelash Serum. It works great on my eyes, but people that I know 
and love dearly, it does not work for. So it isn't gonna work for everyone. Um, anything I talk about on my skin isn't going to work for everyone. But if I'm talking about a product, I usually, before I say yes, I usually will Google that product. I actually read reviews on that product. See, because I don't wanna be talking about a product that has terrible reviews. I also firmly believe that service, customer service is super important. So I kind of feel like I put my name down on the line type of thing, you know? And anyways, uh, so this week, and this is the first time that this has happened to me to this degree. I've had other times where, you know, one of you said, oh, I tried that eyelash serum, it's just not for me. And so it, it wasn't the product, it wasn't the service, it, it was, it was, um, I shouldn't say it wasn't the company, it wasn't the service, it was just simply the product did not work for you. And it's the same thing with foundations, um, eyeshadows, for example. So, you know, when that's all, oh, that's a bummer, it didn't work for you or, and all that. However, um, this week there was a product that one of you bought, and I'm not gonna mention the name of the product or the person that bought it, but one of you bought it based on my recommendation, based on the fact that I was using it and I was liking it. And that's quite an honor, you know, that's quite a compliment. So I take that really serious. If you ever buy anything because I've talked about it, uh, or, or I've influenced you in that sense to buy it and it didn't work out. And I know sometimes that's the case and I know that, you know, when that happens, I usually, I'm usually told nicely, politely in, in a comment, oh, I tried it, it didn't work for me, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, but sometimes a product simply fails. And sometimes it fails because it's a bad product, bad batch, bad, you know, bad storage of from the manufacturer had nothing to do with the person that bought it. So sometimes the product simply fails. And it's very telling when a company, a manufacturer, doesn't stand behind their product. That bothers me a lot. And so that's actually what happened. Now I know everyone has a bad day. I've had them. I've had more than my share of bad days. Everyone has a bad day. And I know not everything works for everybody. And I do know sometimes you can have new people handling your front desk. Maybe they're not fully trained. Or maybe that's a likely excuse, I don't know. But again, like I said, I'm not gonna name names. Uh, ultimately, the end of the story is that if you ever are influenced to buy or try something. And I know some of you have gone through Reliable RX because I buy my Retin-A in India. And I know from a couple of you that right now shipping is delayed. But aside from that, you know, if you ever have an issue, if you've ever had something you've bought and it just hasn't worked out and you go to return it, right, or whatever, and you feel that you're getting bad service, I'd want to know, you know, and not to say that I could fix it, but maybe I can, or maybe I can try, but I'd want to know. I don't, I don't feel personally responsible for a company or a brand's bad service. I just want to know if that happens because I don't want to recommend them or their product in that sense. It is really sad when the product in question might be something I enjoy and I use. And I probably will continue to use it because for me, it's worked out really well. So it's really, it's really bad because I do know, you, you know, everyone has an off day. Product can have an off product too, I don't know. But it just made me really think about influencers, the things we talk about. And I'm, I'm super guilty of it, you know what? When someone talks about a new hair serum or something that's gonna, you know, prevent hair fallout, I'm like all over it. I'm like, yeah, you know, because you want to believe it, right? And and I've been disappointed too. And I just don't want to disappoint you guys like that. I don't want you to be disappointed like I've been disappointed. I really don't. So when something doesn't work and it's beyond it just doesn't work for me 
<laughs> my mascara, right? I love my mascara, but some other people, oh, that was no, that wasn't worth it. Not, no, you know, um, anything like that. You know, I, I don't want you guess I, I guess I don't want you to ever feel like you can't say it to me. You certainly can say it to me. You can send me an email. You can leave me a comment and I will do whatever I can within my power to make it right. And I think that if a brand values, you know, like I'm considered more of a micro influencer, obviously I don't have a huge, huge following. My channel is growing at a very slow, moderate pace. And uh, while sometimes it seems like it's standing still, I do know it's growing. And even though it's a slow, moderate pace, it's growing and I enjoy it. So yeah, I just want you to feel that it's okay to reach out and I will do what I can to fix it, to make it better if possible. And I also want you to know that I value every single one of you. And if one of you buys something, you had earned money, buys it because I talked about it and it works for me. I so want it to work for you. I do, I want it to work for you. So I take, and I think ultimately this is really what I wanted you to know. I take my, my reputation seriously, but more importantly, I take products I talk about seriously. I want you to know that I actually do check them out and before I say yes. And I think most content creators do that, especially the ones that I know. And yes, I only know smaller channels because we take the time and you know, we want to grow our channel the right way. And, um, and we know that our name is on the line basically. So I know most people that I know that, that are in my, you know, my circle of people that I hang out with so-called on YouTube do the same thing. They read reviews, they check out the product before they say yes. So yeah, I just, I want you to know that. I want you to know that there is some thought process into a product that I say yes to. And I don't lightly talk about a product unless I've actually tried it. And if I haven't had a chance to really use it, I always tell you that, you know, just like I always tell you if it's a product that was said to be complimentary from Octoly or, or any other company for that matter. So I'm gonna definitely check it out. And if I talk about it, I'm gonna hopefully always you know be able to try it a little bit before i talk about it and if not i always say that you know i just got this uh, this is the first look see and all that i mean i really value i really value all of you and so that's sad if you ever buy anything that i've talked about and it hasn't worked out for you i do want to know that and if you have an issue with a company that i'm talking about oh my gosh do i want to know that I do, I wanna know that. So um, I know this is gonna be like a super long video, right? It's like crazy, me just jibber jabbering. But I think the role of an influencer, a micro influencer, no matter how big or small, I think it's super important. I do, and um, yeah, I think, I think it's super important. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'm sorry this is so long and just in my backyard again, but it's this time of year when I love being out here. So thank you guys. See you next time.